What's up, people? It's your boy Jatuan. I'm here today back in Kerbal Space Program 1.05. Not 1.1 today, but 1.05. Now, what you're seeing before you is uh, I pretty much had to set this up because I wanted to finish off the Duna Battles for everybody. So we have the Duna Battles coming to a close today. And this is a rocket that I built for Duna. I wanted to see how small of a little bitty thing I could build for Duna. So I've come up with this little bitty launcher. It is really cute. And I think it should be able to make it to a stable orbit around Duna. Has plenty of lift, has plenty of delta V. So what we need to do is see if this will work. So let's extend this out. I'm going to extend this just because reasons. Powered by two RTGs, one battery, and two of the itty bitty ant liquid fuel engines. We are going to push this thing into orbit. Hopefully this will work. So let's... Uh, I think we just need to get to 50,000 to achieve a good orbit. So we're going to push it to 55 and see if that does it for us. So let's get this going and get that going. And <laughs> I'm nervous. Go! Ah, it's so cute! It's so cute! <laughs> Now, since we're on Duna, we can get away with this. We need vastly less thrust to get us into orbit on Duna. So, with this, with the, the Duna space program, we can actually start here with the really... Imagine how much different things would have been with a Duna space program and the little bit of aircraft you could create. Now, of course, this guy is probably going to burn up on his return because the atmosphere is going to kill him. I don't have any parachutes on here. I just wanted to make it get into orbit. I didn't think about the return trip. So, parachutes don't work too well on Duna, but you can get away with it. I would have had to put several parachutes on here, but I tried to keep my TWR as high as possible because I really wanted to stay as small as possible. I could have snugged some parachutes on here. So, we're kind of cursing Jeb to a death unless he survives with his amazing invincible suit that sometimes it survives re-entry on its own so we need to start turning let's start our gravity turn here let's get our nose down all right we still have acceleration going oh this craft is mega stable this can this sas is not meant to handle a craft this small so we have all the time in the world right now oh yes this is going absolutely beautiful <laughs> I can't get over how cute this is. Look at it. Look. Look. All right. Oh, we're at 26, approaching 30. We are not quite at half fuel yet. We got plenty of fuel to make this happen. Plenty of fuel to make this happen. And then some. Oh, yes. All right. Come on. Come on. 36, 37, 38. 39, 40, alright, we're closing in on 50, and we have still a ton of fuel here. Duna is the place, Duna is what's making it happen. You can craft some crazy little craft, there is 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, and 55, let's kill it, we're at 56, so hopefully, hopefully this will work for us. I've never tried to a really low orbit around Duna, so we'll see how well this works when we reach our apoapsis. 31,032. Alright, I'm feeling a little nervous because I'm watching that apoapsis continue to drop. So we may trigger this a little bit early. It's, it's stabilizing, it's stabilizing. 50, or 47. Closing in on 50. And we're going to kick everything up on 53. This is a, a complete contrast to my previous vessel, which was super ginormously huge. And got this massive lift. Using two lifters, got a craft into orbit that could go anywhere in the Kerbal system. Alright, here we go. 
We're going for it. We're going for it. We're going for it. I think we got this easy. I think we got this really easy. <laughs> it's probably going to be the cheatiest little cutest thing I've ever made in my life. Look at how cute it is. Oh my god. All right. I'm just nerding out over how cute it is. It's a really efficient vessel. <sighs> Kerbal power and all that good stuff. But yes, it is able to do the job. We are closing in. Come on. Come on. Come on. It, it can do it. It can do it. We're burning off a lot of fuel, but I think we got it still. I should have done a better gravity turn. <laughs> A better gravity turn would have worked wonders right here. Uh, come on, out of the negatives. Come on. Come on. Oh, we about got it. We about got it. We about got it. And there it goes. And boom. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. That's good for me. I think we have a stable orbit. There it is. Nice, stable orbit. Of course, it's a little ugly on the apoapsis. But I think it's a nice, stable orbit. Does not appear to be degrading. I think we got it. There you go. <laughs> the cutest, absolutely most adorable rocket known to mankind. Oh my god, that is absolutely adorable. <laughs> I love how he looks on there. He's just like, hmm, mm, okay. Let's go ahead and uh, bring him off of here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What go on there? What happening? Okay, there you go. Why is my anti-normal still showing there? Why is my anti-normal still showing there? Oh, oh God, what are you doing? No, 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 no. <laughs> go back down. Hold on. He's going crazy. What are you doing, Jeb? All right, all right, all right. We got this. Stay, stay in control. Why is my anti-normal still showing? I have no clue what's going on there. But there you go. We are in orbit, and uh, we need to back up. We need to back up. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I got some control problems going on right now. But, oh, man. All right, let's get them back on because these controls are going a little wonky on me. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. Board, board, much better, and everything went away. So let's deorbit and see what's going to happen. Oh, it controls so fast too. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. All right, so let's go over. We need to go to our periapsis. We need to bring our periapsis down. So let's go to our apoapsis. Warp to here. Oh crap! Escape. Warp to here instead. <laughs> All right, there we go. And we're just going to take a view of everything as we do this. Imagine riding a small little bitty rocket like this. Can I give him... Can, can I view him? I can't view him right now. Okay. Oh, man. Ah, uh, that would be awesome. I don't know if he's going to survive coming back into orbit like this, but we are going to see... Oh my god, how's that for a shot of the week? <laughs> Let me get a screenshot of that. Unfortunately, my face is probably going to be in there. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this situated here. We need to go retrograde. Alright, and now let's hold that stability assist on. Alright, so what we need to do is bring all this down. So... Here we go. Three, two, one, burn. Okay, we got plenty of fuel. Alright, that should be good for me. And we got a lot of fuel, so hopefully we can use that to slow ourselves down to make this landable. <laughs> I hope that's going to work for me. We gotta get our vertical speed near zero. Uh, did 
I hit it too late? Did I hit it too late? Did I hit it too late? Survive, Jim! Jim survived! <laughs> oh dear! Jim! Jim! No! Oh, he survived! Holy crap! <laughs> oh, that is so awesome! Look at his face! He's still ecstatic! Oh my god, how did he survive that? Oh, Jeb, you are a maniac, sir. Well, you have a long way back. Lucky you, you landed in the frosting of Duna. Well, I guess this is a perfect time to jump to the battle round. <laughs> battle round. Welcome to the battle round. Here we have two aircraft. The LM-723 Moth, and in the distance here, the Duna Spec Chopper. We're going to take these both up for combat and see which one comes out on top and which one will proceed on. So, let's get this battle on. Both aircraft are turning to one another. Missiles are away. Let's see what happens. Is it going to get contact here? Are there countermeasures on the LM-23 Moth? Is this missile going to have enough flight time to reach it? It is quite a distance away. And I'm not seeing countermeasures fall flashing. That is a direct hit on the cockpit. The craft is down. The LM-23 Moth is down and in many pieces in the distance. The first round goes to the Duna Spec Chopper. A120s are armed. It is going to be in range here soon. That is going to be a very dangerous thing. There you see it right there on the radar showing up. There is the target. Missiles are away. Let's take a look at that one flying in here. That is a beauty from BD Armory. Coming through the sunlight. Straight down. The LM-723 Moth has no countermeasures. It is a miss. It is a miss. There is another AIM-120 in route. Flying on in. Is it going to be able to dodge this one as well? Here we go. Countermeasures is firing, but no, it is down. It is contact. And combat has been broken off. And there you go. The chopper is the winner of this round for some reason. Earlier, those countermeasures did not fire with the moth, but that may be because it was just outside of that range of, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Be sure? Alright, let's go on with the next battle. The winner of this one is the Duna Spec Chopper. So let's line them back up and see what, how the next round is going to go. Alright, and here we go once again. Here is the Duna Spec Chopper, and in the distance is Tubal's Duna Flighter 7. See how well they do when they reach their attack range and then turn and face off for combat. All right, here they go turning in. And it looks like the flighter may have an early shot. There is a missile away. There are missiles away. Is the chopper going to be able to avoid this? It's coming straight in. We have contact. It is down. There was a second AM9 on the way. But it is over for the first round. They're doing a flighter. Takes round one. All right, here we are in round two. Let's get this one out of the way and see how, how well both aircraft are able to compete this round once again. Both aircraft are lifting off and going to their start positions, and then they will loop around and begin combat. They are about a little over halfway, and it is a countdown to see who's going to reach their position first and then turn around for combat. You see right here, it looks like the Duna Spec Chopper is trying to come around, but the Flighter has a bit more maneuverability, and it might be able to snap a second shot off. Oh, there it goes. AIM-120 is on its way. Let's watch it come on in. Is the Chopper going to be able to avoid? There is another missile in route back. Oh, it's a miss. Both of them have a miss. 
There's another 120 in route, though. Is that going to be... There is another one. There are several in route right now. Is the chopper going to be able to avoid them? We have a miss. Another near miss. Those were very close shots there. <laughs> now, we get to see what they're going to do. We have shots coming in. A lot of shots coming in from the Duna Flyer. But there is a missile lock. Look at those guns flying. This is a competition here. Trying to dodge. Oh, it's dodging pretty well so far. But is it going to be able to keep it up? Is it going to be able to keep it up? It is directly in harm's way. It's getting pinned. It's got a few shots on it. It's got stable. It's stable again, but that's a dangerous place to be right behind those guns. Is it going to be able to avoid it? Is it going to be able to avoid it? Another round of another burst of shells coming flying at the Duna Flighter. It still has those missiles. It has a lot. Is it going to be able to fire? Is it going to be able to fire? It does not fire. It had the shot. Did not fire. Uh, it's trying to come around. I'm not sure what it's trying to do right now. But those shells are... It's flying right in the stream of shells. That is dangerous. What do we have going on here? It might be able to outlast that battery on the Dune Spec Chopper. It might be missiles away. I think the Dune Spec Chopper may be out of juice. Actually, no, I take that back. There is a missile inbound. There is a missile inbound, and... Oh, it's a miss! But the Dune of the Flighter is still in combat. Both aircraft are still in combat. Oh, and there it is! Since they were both still able to fly, and actually, the uh, even though it was almost out of power, it had just enough energy to actually still maneuver, so it was still in combat, and still trying to turn around and fight the Duna Flighter. So therefore, combat was still a go, and flying into victory is the Duna Flighter taking our second combat round. Let's line them up with a new round and see how it's going to go. All right, so we are back with Tubal's Duma Flighter, and over here in the distance is the EL-1. Doing its liftoff, built kind of like a Corsair, looking all sorts of beautiful. Let's see how these two craft do. Uh, it's looking like the EL's having a little trouble lifting off. A little trouble lifting off. But there it goes. It is able to lift off the ground, and it is using those dual props in the front to achieve that liftoff. So let's see how well these do in combat. Racked full of RTGs is the EL-1. And in the distance is a very highly competitive uh, Tubal's Duna Flighter. And it looks like it might have an advantage. It has those AIM-9s already armed. I may have been calling those AIM-20s for some reason. 120s? What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh no, it might have an early shot. Early shot is off. On the EL-1 missile flying in. Is it going to be able to outmaneuver and dish out enough countermeasures? It has a ton of countermeasures on there. It should be able to evade. And there it goes. It did fool it. But there are guns being shot. There is another aim. There is another one. Let's see where this one goes. Is it going to contact? And it looks like it is also going to miss. Both aircraft still in the air. There is another missile inbound. Let's take a look. Look at all of the countermeasures going off, trying to evade. Is it going to be able to fool it? Yes, it looks like it is. Once again, causing a miss. If it is able to loop around, it might have a chance with that shot. There is another missile inbound. Is it going to be able to outmaneuver, evade this one that's on a sharp turn? It's going to have to do some tricks here. Whoa, just in front. Just in front of the aircraft. Explodes harmlessly away. It's going to have to come in and start firing. It is down to guns. It still has two additional missiles left. But it is firing away. Let's see what type of damage it's going to be able to do here. 
Oh, we have contact. We have contact. Let's take a look from the cockpit. We can't because it doesn't let us. But there's a lot of contact. We have a lot of damage being done, but it is still airborne. It can't maneuver. There goes the wing. It is over for the EL-1 on this first round. It is going to come down hard. There it goes. It is just about going to crash into the surface here. Well, let's watch that come on in. With that extremely heavy GAU weight, it's still... It's fighting. It's fighting. And there is contact. And there it goes. The... Uh, Tubal's doing a flighter once again. Comes away with the win. Let's line them up for a second round and see how well they do. All right, and 4,000. They are ready for combat. Let's see if the EL-1's going to be able to take advantage. No, we have... We already have an AIM-120 in route. Oh, are we going to be able to bust out enough countermeasures to evade? It's going high. It's going high. And it looks like that one's going to be harmlessly away, but there is another one in route. Let's take a look. And here it is coming in. Countermeasures. Countermeasures are out. Whoa! Near miss. Another near miss. How long can it keep this up? If it's able to get that gun towards the Duna Flighter, it may have a chance. It is in range for those other missiles, but there's another missile in route, an AIM-9. Is it going to be able to evade? Countermeasures are out. Countermeasures are out. And flying in front, right beyond it. All right, so what do we have going on now? Unable to come around with that ginormous gun is the EL-1. Coming behind it is a stream of shells. Rolling to evade is the EL-1. Still unable to fully come around. It, some additional control surfaces would have been a bit more handy on this one. Unfortunately, it's not able to fully loop with its current control surfaces on here. But there are shells in every which direction. Flying everywhere, shells. <laughs> Is it going to be able to evade long enough to get a shot off? Oh, it turns its underbelly straight to the Duna Flighter. It might be losing control. Those evasive maneuvers, it can't keep up for excessively long. Oh, what's going to get hit first? While we're doing that, let's take a look here. And letting it fly past. This might be the EO-1's chance to get a few shots off it's, if it's able to capitalize. Looking off in the distance, there is the D Tubal's Duna Flighter 7. Is it going to be able to capitalize here? Closing in. Turning. It might have a missile lock from here. It has the range. Missiles are away. Countermeasures are already out. Let's watch this one come in. Is it going to be able to evade once again? It's been pretty evasive so far. It's avoided all the missiles. And no! It took it right to the centerpiece. That is going to be the second round. And there you go. Tubal Zuna Flighter has taken this round as well. It is going to go on to the next round. And let's see what crafts are going to combat next. All right. So here's the final round. We have Tubal Zuna Flighter has been doing fantastic these last few rounds. In the distance, we have JR Ray's Duna Kite. Let's see how well these two craft do combating one another. Both of them have been chewing through the competition. It will be an interesting one. Right off the back, we have the GAAU-8 sending rounds over. How well is the Duna Fighter going to be able to dodge while it tries to fire off? That aim is in route. The aim 120 in route. Here we are. Is it going to be able to dodge enough? Ah, it's a near miss! A near miss! 
yet there are more inbound. Oh, we have contact right at the moment of contact with the JRA. Duna Kite. Duna's Tubal's Duna Flighter is doing fantastically well and is taking the first round in the final round. So let's line them back up and see how they do. Lining them back up, here is JR Ray's Duna Kite. And in the distance, Tubal's Duna Flighter. Let's see which one's going to be able to outmaneuver the other and take the win. Going to their start positions are both aircraft. Let's see how well they do. GAU-8 is armed, looping around, trying to get a shot off. Is it going to be able to take advantage of that big heavy gun that it has in front? But we have long range missiles here on Tubal's Duna Flighter and it might be able to get a shot off before those guns get into range. Missiles are away! And also shells flying in! Right past! No contact! Guns blazing! Oh! Tubal's Duna Flighter does an amazing thing! with a flyby shot on the JRA kite taking it down for a second round the winner of this round is Tubal's Duna Flighter an amazing little craft that has been able to do some quite amazing things that makes me want to take it up against my little one that I actually took out of the ground well you know what I'm gonna line it up against my little craft and see how how well it does because my craft is not tested very well and it had to be a good time to see how well my craft does. So I'm gonna line up my craft against Tubal's Duna Flighter and let's see how well it does. Both aircraft are set to engage at exactly the same time that my craft, for some reason, tries to cheat and early engage. So this should allow both aircraft to turn around and do combat at about the exact same time. They are ready for combat. Let's see what happens here. Right off the bat, that's gonna be a missile lock missiles are off and it has to turn before it's able to get its missile lock that aim 9 is coming in hot is it going to be able to evade it looks like it is going to barely miss off the side there is another missile coming in from a lot that aim 9 is coming in fast is it going to be able to evade once again a near miss shells coming in from the slew of brownings there is contact! More contact! Let's take a look back here. That is a sharp flying craft right there, if I may say so myself. The Menace 1 is doing a lot of damage right now. It has a lot of stability. I took a lot of time off to build that. But it looks like it is able to do the damage against it. And still not out of the game yet. Still firing is Tubal's doing the flighter. That is a craft that is not going to stop. It's getting in range for guns and missiles. It chooses the missile. Missiles are away. There is no more maneuvers it has left. And it's coming in for the final strike and a miss. A miss. Another one. And another miss. It results over to the shells and the shells do the final bit of damage and there you go there was your bonus round that I know people probably didn't care to see and with the menace pouring down hot shells over everything so this was a fun bit of combat the first time I recorded it nothing went right everything went wrong <laughs> I lost two hours of recording the last time and uh, I was not able to get very much done that is really cool to see. Let's look at the cockpit here. But that was a lot of fun. This combat series has been a lot of fun. Now, you may have caught the stream that I did for 1.1 yesterday, or Monday, rather. And you might have seen that uh, 1.1 is not too far off and got a chance to watch a stream 1.1. Now, I really hope if you haven't yet, you'll get it. You'll actually go over, check out that video. It is a lot of fun to happen there. And hopefully, um, we actually had some, some guests stop in. Uh, <laughs> so, as I pleaded with different mod developers to uh, the BD Armory. BD Armory, yes, the mod developer for BD Armory was even stopped by and said hello. 
So I'm hoping that these mods make their way over to version 1.1. And uh, there are so many great mods that I would love to see. But until then, if you like what you see and hit that like button, drop me in the comment. Let me, drop me in the com drop me in a comment. Let me know what you think. And I hope to catch you guys in the next video. Until then, this is your boy Chitwa, and I am out. <laughs> Peace. Clear difference with 64-bit being a bit more fluid. 64-bit in my test, even though with the larger footprint for memory, it was running at a higher frames per second, running at about 7 during this stress test, and 32-bit did drop down to around 0. That is what I would...